Okay, so this is a little section on numerical solutions, which is um, sensibly checking for answers. It's a bit of trial and error, but um, with a little bit more substance to it than you've seen before. Okay, so this is for when you get an equation that you can't solve algebraically, then you would use a numerical method to solve it. You will only use numerical methods if you can't use algebra. You should always try to solve algebraically. You only use a numerical method if it's not possible to find an answer through an algebraic method. Uh, you will always need to sketch the graph of what you're looking for. And you will choose a method that's appropriate to the question you're being asked. You'll always have to state the degree of accuracy that you're working to as well. Since we are finding um, numerical answers, they are not going to give us whole numbers most of the time. So you must um, state the degree of accuracy that you're working with. Okay, so consider this equation here. This is one that's not possible for us to solve algebraically. So the first thing we're going to do is sketch the graph and then I'll show you some methods of how to um, find those answers, the values of x that would make it work. So let's sketch the graph of y equals this function. Now to do that we need to know a bit of what it looks like. So we know it's a cubic but we don't know where there's any turning points. So if we um, differentiate and set it equal to zero and solve that equation then we could find where the turning points are to help us sketch it. So if we, solving that equation would give us x squared equals negative two thirds. So we have a little bit of a problem there. We can't square root a negative so there are actually no turning points on this graph. So it's going to look like this. It's got no maximum and minimum on it. It still has that x cubed shape to it, but it doesn't have the actual kink in the middle. There's no turning points. It's nice and smooth through the middle of that x cubed curve. We can also work out that it goes through minus two and it crosses the x axis um, in between minus one and zero. There's our root there. So that's the root of that equation. Okay, so first way of doing this is looking for a change of sign and we're going to do a decimal search. So set our equation equal to f of x and we know that it has a root in between um, 0 and minus 1 from our graph. So we're going to have a look between those values. So set up a table, we're going to try x equals minus 1 first, pop it into our equation and we get minus 1. Now we're looking for when it, that graph crosses the x-axis, so we're looking for a change of sign, some point where it changes between being negative and positive. Right, next, we're doing a decimal search here, so we move along just by one decimal place. So we're going to minus 0 0.9. If you put that in, you get minus 0.529, so still negative, no change there. Okay, next is minus 0 0.8. Again, the answer is negative. And then we get minus 0 0.7. Here we get our first positive value. So here we have a change in sign between minus 0 0.8 and minus 0 0.7. So that means that our root lies in that interval. Now we're going to go another step further than that and try to narrow down our search. So we're looking at the second decimal place. So we've already done negative 0.8, now we'll go to negative 0.79, just moving a tiny bit further along. That one still gives us a negative answer, so let's try negative 0.78, still negative. Negative 0.77, now we get our first positive one, looking in between minus 0.8 and up towards minus 0.7. So now we know from that sign change that we have a root that lies in the interval of negative 0.78 and negative 0.77. Now you carry on this process as much as you need to for whatever degree of accuracy you're working to. At this point we can make these um, statements. We know that uh, x is equal to negative 0.775 halfway between that interval, with a maximum error of plus or minus 0 0.005. There are different ways to write your answers. So another way is to write it as this. If we were to round to one decimal place, x must be minus 0 0.8. Since we know it's somewhere between 0 0.78 and 0 0.77, anything in between there would round to 0 0.8 uh, if we were rounding to one decimal place. Okay, other ways of doing this. We look for a change of sign, but this time we're doing interval by section instead of a decimal search. 
So instead of starting at one end and working up towards the other, we cut it in half and we look for which half of that interval we, um, we would have our root on. Okay, so we've got, we're starting with the same equation. We know our root is between minus one and zero. So set up your table, start with our first value, minus one, and then we go halfway. So minus one and zero, half of that is minus 0 0.5. We try that out. Here we have a change of sign. So we know that our root lies between minus one and minus 0 0.5. So then we would go for halfway between those two. That one is a positive number. So now our top limit changes to that one. So we know it lies between minus one and minus 0 0.75 now. Next we'll go halfway between those two. So that's negative 0 0.875. That gives us a negative answer, so that gives us a bottom limit. Um, so now our interval lies between minus 0 0.875 and minus 0 0.75. So once again we go halfway between. Work out that one. That's negative, so again that replaces the bottom of our interval. And you carry on as much as you need to. Okay, at this point here, we would be able to say that x equals minus 0.8 to one decimal place. And we can make statements about the answers like we did with our previous one. Okay, potential problems with these methods that you need to be aware of. First of all, you might have the situation where the curve touches the x-axis. So you would actually have a root here, but it wouldn't show up in either of those two methods because you don't get a change in sign. The graph is entirely above the x-axis there, so you would miss that one. Next one is that um, the situation where you have roots close together. So say you know that there is a root between 0 and 1, whereas in fact with this one, because they're so close together, maybe it was 0 0.3, 0 0.4 and 0 0.5, um, that you might miss two of them. You would see that there's an, a change between zero and one, a change in sign, but you once you found the first one, you would probably stop. You wouldn't then look for the other two because you think you found your root. Okay, and then the other one is if you get a discontinuous curve that looks like this, where you have an asymptote or something similar, where if you went to the left of that asymptote and the right, it would show you that there was a change in sign. It would tell you that there was a root there at, say, say 0.8, um, but actually you can see that there isn't. There has been a change of sign, but there isn't a root there. The curve doesn't go through the x-axis at that point, so it gives you a false root. Now all of these are avoided if you sketch the graph. If you know what the graph looks like before you start, you'll know all of these pitfalls and you'll be able to look at them closer and make sure you don't miss anything.